Notwithstanding the obliterative appeal of drink and drugs, Mark's interest in gathering information and gaining knowledge and using it is unquestionable. I'd like to think that his connections with the collective, for instance, helped him to advocate his inimitable vocal style. I do remember Trevor Wishart talking with Mark about Spreskizang, speech song, as it was used by contemporary composers, including the Salford-born composer Peter Maxwell Davis. And Mark's mannerisms are closer to Spreskizang than anything in rock, or indeed rap. I do recall telling Mark about the video operas of American composer Robert Ashley, which appeared uh, uh, soon after as Perfect Lives Private Parts, late night on Channel 4, where Ashley looked over the fence of the Midwest, as he put it, and described what he saw in a poetic stream of consciousness, vernacular draw drawl, much influenced uh, by uh, his compulsion, compulsion for vodka and Valium. Um, I'm going to show you, this is the sort of thing, now this is what I want to do, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, the next clip on. I'll show you a short next clip. How different the cows from the pigs who simply stand there looking out. Vast pauses between cow events are illuminated by the crashing of the cows. Two, crash, two, blink, crash, blink, crash, blink, left, crash, four, left, four, left, four, left, four, left, left, four, left, 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 right, left, 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 Meanwhile, back at the trailer camp, in a cloud of cigarette smoke, she studies the videotape. Boogie Woogie rocks the airstream. You're so beautiful, but you gotta die someday. Give me a little loving before you pass. That's, uh, that's clipped off. It's a great shame. It's, uh, you're so beautiful, but you're gonna die someday. Give me a bit of your loving before you pass away. Uh, can we have the, the lights again, please? Sorry. Um, there are some elements of Mark's style that strike me as reasonable, despite the adverse comments they cause. Um, one such is his fondness, like punk poet John Cooper Clarke, for reading from scripts. Given the length of the lyrics and um, their textual density, it makes sense to refer to the written world. But in rock performance, this is seen as inauthentic because it exposes the preparedness of the performance, where it comes from the eyes and not from the heart, if we know what that is. But in classical music, the opposite is the case. Use of the score, like holding a Bible, asserts legitimacy. Here's uh, Matthew Best in the role of the priest, uh, though not a, not a hip priest, uh, in Elgar's Dream of Gerontius with the Halley Orchestra, uh, conducted by Mark Elder. that um, lights thank you uh, with that um, valediction I want to conclude by taking my three themes and making points with them moving back from the particular to the general and I'll start with this uh, three years after the premiere of Durantius in 1903 GK Chesterton father of Father Brown, wrote the following. The artistic temperament is a disease that affects amateurs. It is a disease which arises from men not having the power of expression to utter and get rid of the element of art in their being. 
John Lawson quotes this in his absorbing book of 2005, Amateur Operatics, A Social and Cultural History, adding that this perception of singing as primarily cathartic is a psychological notion that misses the most obvious reason of the need for untrained vocalists to give voice in public, is the need to perform to others, of engaging in the act of performance, creating something out of next to nothing, in Mark's case, a plastic bag of lyrics. And the purpose is not communicative, but rather rhetorical. Mark declares rather than shares. So let's not let others saddle Mark with psyches and psychoses. Let's remember that he's on stage and in the studio because it's an extreme experience, markedly more fascinating than anything you could do short of sex. As Lydia Lunch has said at the start of her shows, thank you for leaving your bedroom and walking into mine. As for the band that participates in Mark's concept, The Fall, Let's remember how resolutely it exists. We can't say, like The Who's Pete Townsend recently said of Roger Daltrey, that um, Mark's just the singer in the band. But we must acknowledge, surely, that the musicians embed his words in a sound world that lets them live beyond paper. Finally, as to the fall's part in the history of the city, we must use what we find in these sessions today to combat the cretinous historicizations that journalizing dilettantes like Morley and Savage have made up. I know Mark would agree, because I simply have to change one word of what he told The Telegraph last week to show you his support for me. He said he feared, quote, the threat of some kind of standardized horrible story written by a bunch of fucking wankers. Well, for leaving your bedroom and walking into mine, thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, thank